What's going on guys? So I'm getting a lot of people asking me the classic question, right? How do you burn fat and build muscle at the same time? And it's understandable that they're asking this because this is like the holy grail of the fitness world. Everybody wants to get leaner. Everybody wants to build muscle. The problem is that a lot of people think you can't do it at the same time. And that's because there's a lot of people saying that you have to go through these bulking and cutting cycles. But one of the things that I discovered long ago when I started the ketogenic diet was that aside from the health benefits I was getting from it, you know, aside from the fact that it was helping me with my ulcerative colitis and helping me to attain better mental acuity and helping me to stay lean, it was also helping me to retain and build muscle mass while getting lean. And when I say this to people, a lot of times their eyes bug out of their head because in a lot of people's minds, they say, you can't build muscle without carbohydrate. Well, that's a fallacy. And the reason why it's a fallacy is because we know the pathway through which you build muscle, it's called mTOR, the mammalian target of rapamycin. And mTOR is activated by an amino acid. Specifically, uh, leucine is the amino acid most responsible for activating mTOR. So we know that in order to build muscle mass, you just need to be consuming enough protein. So why does the ketogenic diet help with this? Well, what we found and what science has found is that actually beta hydroxybutyrate, the main ketone you produce to fuel your body, um, when that is present in high enough amounts, it actually prevents leucine from being oxidized right by the body. That means that your body's not wasting as much leucine when you're in a state of ketosis. Right? So your body is better able to build muscle and it is better able to retain muscle because it's preserving leucine, the amino acid most responsible for you in activating muscle protein synthesis. Now, this brings up the question, well, why aren't more people doing the ketogenic diet? And the answer, I think, um, doesn't lie in the fact that it doesn't work. It lies in the fact that the ketogenic diet is actually pretty hard to do. And given the fact that there's a lot of people giving crazy, crazy advice as far as macronutrient percentages, um, some people are talking about like 90% uh, fat, 10% protein, uh, no carbs. Some people are talking about like 80% fat, 10% um, protein or 15% or, or protein, um, less than 5% carbs. Um, what I like to do is I like to go to one of the only real studies that was done uh, on athletes in a live human trial. And that was the study by Dr. Jeff Volick and his team up at the University of Connecticut called the Metabolic Characteristics of Keto-Adapted Ultra-Endurance Runners. Now, I know we're talking about ultra-endurance runners here, but, but bear with me because it's going to apply to strength athletes. What they found with these athletes um, was they separated them into two groups, right? They had a high-carb um, traditional endurance athlete diet where you know they were consuming something like 55% carbohydrate, um, uh, you know, 20% uh, protein and, and the rest fat. And then they had um, the ketogenic athletes and they were consuming something like 70% um, uh, uh, fat, 20% uh, protein, and then 10% um, carbohydrate, less than 10% carbohydrate, right? And so these athletes, they went and they came up to the University of Connecticut after doing their diets for six months. They did a trial with a VO2 max, um, and in the VO2 max, it was found that the, um, the athletes uh, who were doing the, the low-carb, high-fat diet, they actually were able to oxidize fat at much higher rates of intensity than the high-carb athletes. Like We're talking upwards of, of I think it was 75% of their VO2 max, they were, they were able to oxidize fat. And that got rid of the fallacy that you can't do um, intense exercise when you're on a ketogenic diet because these guys were able to do really intense exercise while still using fat for fuel, right? Without dipping into their glycogen stores whatsoever. The other part of the trial was a three hour run. And what they found with um, the high fat, low carb athletes was that they had the same amounts of glycogen in their bodies before, during, and after the trial. That means that the athletes on the ketogenic diet were actually much more efficient at utilizing glucose and they were not glycogen deficient whatsoever even after a three hour run, 
right? Especially, and this was compared to athletes who had been eating a high carb athlete, uh, a high carb diet for for six months prior to the trial. So we know that the um, these athletes had better glycogen retention. So glycogen was not a was not a problem. What I like to do is I like to get into the specifics when I'm looking at a study. So I'll go beyond actually just reading the abstract and I'll look at what the athletes were eating. And um, the high fat, low carb athletes, they were actually eating an average, an average of 82 grams of carbohydrates per day. Now, when you talk to most quote unquote keto gurus out there, um, there's very few people on YouTube or on the blogosphere out there who are saying, telling people that you should go above 50 grams of carbohydrates per day. Now, what does this tell us? This tells us that if you want to gain the benefits of fat adaptation, you don't necessarily need to go below 50 grams of carbs per day. In fact, um, one of the things that I've classically done in the past is on my really, really hard, intense days at the gym, I'll go upwards of 100 grams of carbs per day and I'll give myself a serving of white rice at the end of the day. What that allows me to do is it allows me to experience the benefits of fat adaptation, um, allowing my body to fuel itself with fat most of the day, but then giving myself some carbs to refuel those glycogen stores at the end of the day after I've done my workouts. Um, the other thing I want to mention here is that a lot of keto gurus out there are saying to go very, very low protein. But if you look at uh, this study, these athletes were, were in ketosis and they were maintaining an average of 0.8 to 1 grams of protein per pound of body weight per day. Now that's still considered high protein according to the RDAs. Um, so, and that's, that's definitely enough protein to be activating that mTOR pathway, right? So my advice to you is that if you want to gain the benefits of fat adaptation, if you want to burn muscle and uh, uh, build muscle and burn fat at the same time, while maintaining that mental acuity, try to start by keeping your carbohydrates in that, that 100 gram area. Maybe, maybe working your way up to 150 grams, but try to start by keeping them in the 100 gram area. All right? Get yourself enough protein and then consume enough fat that you're gonna be able to experience the benefits of fat adaptation. And I'm talking like upwards of 100 to 120 grams of fat per day. Um, you know, at least 70% of your calories coming from fat, making sure that, you know, a lot of those are omega-3s and some of the other stuff I talk about in many of my other videos. But this moderate, this modified form of the ketogenic diet could be a great way of building muscle and burning fat at the same time um, while getting a lot of the benefits of a ketogenic diet um, without having to go so strict as you would if you were doing it for therapeutic purposes, you know, because people who have epilepsy and who are battling cancer and things like that, they do have to get their, their ketone um, blood levels up to a certain part, point in order to gain the benefits. But if you're just trying to burn fat and build muscle, um, you don't need to go that strict and, and this could be a great solution for you. So that's what I got for today, guys. I hope that made sense. I'm going to put the uh, studies below that you can check out. And uh, if you got any questions for me, just put them in the comments below. Uh, and if you're interested, come check out our Start Keto Right newsletter. That's up at www.startketoright.com. When you sign up, we give you a whole bunch of downloads, a whole bunch of awesome things. So I'll talk to you guys soon.